Okay, so we previously created a device and now we're actually ready to run the app on the iPhone. Um, what I'm showing you is I'm running actually on my iPhone and I have a copy of it showing on the screen here on the left hand side through the QuickTime recorder. And on the right side, I'm showing you logged into the dashboard of the Spotwalla website. If you notice on our devices now, we do have our tracking device. And over here, there's an indication of how many messages, how many location messages have come from the app uh, and are associated with this device. And it currently it's zero because we've just created it. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to actually be able to go very far today. This is in the middle of the Texas uh, snow nightmare here. Uh, streets are all closed and we're kind of locked up. But we're going to go ahead and show you how to get it started, make it work, and then I'll go to a different account where I've actually logged a few miles and can show you how, to, uh, how this all works. So let's get started. So we go in, we're going to launch SW Tracker, and we come into what I call the main page. The main page has three status lights at the top. Uh, the left one being the spot walla connection information. We'll get into that on the next page. The middle light is the tracking light, which goes green when we're actually tracking. It blinks purple and green if you're in an auto track mode, and we can talk more about that later. And then over on the right is the internet availability. Um, it is normally green if you're on a cell signal. It's yellow if you're on Wi-Fi, which is fine and then it's red if you have no connection to the internet. Um, I chose those colors because in normal operation you're going to be out on the road perhaps on a motorcycle or in a car and you're not going to have Wi-Fi so I chose cellular connection to be green and that seems to make most sense but Wi-Fi connection is perfectly fine. Um, if it's red and you're out traveling that's okay because um, the SW Tracker will buffer your data as it collects it. If it tries to reach SpotWall and can't do that, it will continue on. It will hold that information. And then when the internet does return, that data is sent off to SpotWall. So you shouldn't lose any information as you go in and out of cellular coverage areas. So the first thing we have to do, and these two things are very important. They have to be done when you are on uh, either Wi-Fi or cellular because we actually have to initially connect to the SpotWalla site to make this work. And that's for logging in first. So I'm going to hit Application Setup. And that takes me to what I'm calling the Setup screen. And the top link there is to log in. I'm going to tap on that. And this is where we enter the credentials that we created over here in our account. So I am going to enter the email address I started with. And the password. Oh, and it says it didn't like what I did. Let's try it again. Okay, that got us in. Now we're back to the setup page again. If you notice now on the left side right here, this status light, login status, has gone green. This indicates that we have a proper login and have logged in. Now over on the right hand side you see device status and it says it's red. Now this is the other thing that has to be done while you are online or have internet available and that is to select your device. Now you can have multiple devices in SpotWalla. You might have a Spot device, a Delorme tracker, uh, an Android phone for some reason, uh, which you would be using the Bubbler tracking app. Or, in this case, we're using SW Tracker on an iOS phone. So what we need to do is we have to select our device. So if we tap on device selection, if you have only one device, which is what we have currently in this account, then what will happen is it will come up and automatically select that device 
and we should see the device status go green and we should see the name of the device appear under the device selection link. So let's tap on that. And if you notice now it says our device is the SW tracking device and the status light up here has gone green. So both of these green lights now indicate that we are properly logged in to Spotwalla and we will be able to start tracking. It is important to realize that this SW tracking device here in the app needs to match this device here. If you have multiple devices, this tells Spotwalla when it receives data from this app which device to associate it with in the Spotwalla website. Okay, so let's go back. We can get down to these other things a little bit later. We'll just click on the bottom, which is return to the main screen. And now if you notice, this three status lights, the left hand one has now gone completely green. If you had by any chance logged in but not selected a device, this would have gone yellow to indicate there was an issue. Okay, now to actually track is very simple. All you have to do is click on this link that says enable tracking. So what I want you to do before I click that, however, is take a look at the very bottom and there is a recent GPS activity shown down there. Currently there's no activity happening because we are not tracking. You control the tracking with SW Tracker. When you are tracking, your GPS locator is active and you are using more battery power. So you want to make sure that you turn off tracking when you are not planning on having your data set up to uh, to spot wallet. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on enable tracking and you'll likely see that it may go red briefly and then the data as it starts uh, updating may turn gray. Let's watch it real closely. Clicked it. You notice it's red right now and now it's gray. So it's important to know that when it's red um, my app has decided that the data coming in, the accuracy is not sufficiently accurate enough, so it ignores those data points. So there is a threshold. It's currently set to 30 meters, and it says any data coming in for tracking purposes that is higher than 30 meters, meaning that it, it can't localize where you are to within a 30 meter circle, then it gets thrown away. Now right now, you can see, if you look at the location, in brackets on the right hand side, you'll see a number jumping around between 4.8, 4.81. That is the GPS accuracy on my phone. So I'm well within the 30 meters. So this 4.8 means that the point that's coming in is accurate within less than 5 meters from where the point is that it comes in. So we we have now already sent one status point up to Spotwalla. As soon as that got to be accurate enough, it tracked that point. Now, further tracking requires three things to happen. First of all, the accuracy that we talked about. Any data not up to that accuracy is just ignored. Secondly, Spotwalla enforces a five minute duration between location points. So it will not track anything that comes in faster than five minutes. And then thirdly, I've implemented in the application what I call a 100 meter fence. And this is that you must have moved at least 100 meters from the previous location that was sent to Spotwalla. Now, why would we do that? What we found in early uh, SW Connect application with the, tech, the beta testers is that they may stop for lunch at a restaurant. They're sitting at a table for, you know, maybe an hour or so. And given that there is always a little bit of GPS inaccuracy, scattered points would come in every five minutes all around where they were sitting in the restaurant, which is something that you didn't need and didn't want. So any tracking point requires that you have to have moved at least 
100 meters, and then it will pick up the next point. Now I'm going to go over here real quick, and since I'm in my home and I have access to the website, I'm going to go ahead and refresh the screen here on Spotwalla. And if you'll notice, the number here is, is jumped up to one, indicating there is a location point that came in. I'm going to click on that briefly. And this shows you that at 1210, uh, when we started the tracking, uh, my app, SW Tracker, sent an app, a location message up there, which includes not only the location, it includes your speed. Now this speed at four miles, again, is due to the fact that the GPS accuracy is wandering a bit and it feels like it may be moving. Okay, and then I add some debug information into this. So I'm going to go back to this now. So given that I can't get out and drive today, I'm going to simply disable tracking. Disabling tracking is a one time that it will force a point to go back to Spot Walla. And the reason is this. Imagine if you were on a trip and you were about a minute away from home and you know a mile, mile and a half from home, a data point was sent up to Spot Walla and you now pulled into where you were going to finish up your trip and you weren't within the five minute minimum window. If that happened and, and you disabled tracking at that time, if we didn't force a point, you would have no record that you actually stopped at the location you wanted to stop at. For an IBA ride, I found that that would be really a bad thing. So whenever you disable tracking, another data point is automatically sent and it does not have to um, honor those other criteria, i.e. the, the uh, location distance and location time. <coughs> this is where you're saying basically, this is the end of my trip, and I want to make sure that this point is recorded. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Disable Tracking. You'll notice the tra tracking light has gone from green to red to indicate the tracking's off. And if we look down in the bottom, the tracking is no longer updating. Now, one thing I didn't talk about down there, and I should mention, there is a buffer number. If for any reason it's time to send a point and you're not within cell coverage or Wi-Fi coverage, you're out in the middle of the mountains, whatever, the point will increment, it, the buffer count will increment, and it will just stay there until it has a time to um, send that data. And if you're out of cell coverage for long periods of time, you will watch that buffered count can get up to, you know, I've seen people where they didn't select a device and it would actually increment it for like 300 messages. But when you're properly logged in and you hit uh, cell coverage, it will reload the stuff out, send it to Spotwalla, and that count should go back to zero. So if you ever have a problem, look at that buffered count at the bottom to see if there's an issue. So I'm going to come back one more time out here to my spot wallet dashboard and now you'll notice there are two different um, data points. There's the 1210 that was sent uh, early on and then at 1215 another was sent when I closed out the tracking and that's expected. So everything's working fine. So let's go back to the main dashboard and let's see what we would do. So if you actually want to, re to view your data, then what you have to do is create a trip. I'll tell you what, let's set that up with a new screen and we'll continue the video in just a second.